how is the government spending our tax dollars since COVID? I went through the financial statements, so you don't have to. So let's go through their numbers, how much money we have earned, how much we have spent since COVID, um, and just compare it to last year and see what's going on. So make sure you keep it locked for all that and more. It's Crystal with the Cash Compass. All right, welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money. But for whatever reason, they forgot to mention it. If you love all things personal finance, investing, and economics, you're going to want to subscribe. It's right down there. It's free, by the way. Hit the bell when you're down there so you don't miss any of my uploads, all right? Let's get into it. All right, so kind of an interesting detail before I actually get into the financial statements is that Janet Yellen, who once was the chair of the Federal Reserve, is now the Secretary of the Treasury, which to me is a huge conflict of interest. If you guys did not know, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government are supposed to, they're supposed to be, allegedly, supposed to be two separate entities. Um, so the fact that we're just kind of playing swapsies and now we have people from the Federal Reserve working in the U.S. government, it's questionable to say the least. Um, but most people don't even know who that is and most people don't care. Anyway, let's get into these numbers. <laughs> Okay, so I already went ahead and highlighted certain things that I kind of wanted to talk about. So we're going to just walk through them together. First and foremost, um, it, not that it wasn't any different last year, but of course, the biggest expense this year was in health. And this number of 1407, remind you, these numbers are in billions, okay? Which means that this is actually $1.407 trillion that we've spent in health and human services. Now, that number is up about $200 billion from last year. Um, the number last year, just so you can see, is 1222. So, yeah, you know, almost $200,000 we have spent more uh, because of COVID. Of course, I'm pretty sure it's heavily driven by COVID, PPE research and development for these vaccinations and the like um so yeah interesting right after that is social security and then after that is the department of veteran affairs and department of defense of course we know that the department of defense is very very well funded we've seen that all throughout 2020 because they had all flavors of cops swat teams and the like in our streets so we know that they're fully, we know that they're fully, fully funded, right? Um, it didn't change that much year over year. It still makes up 60% of our federal taxes, okay? So out of all the taxes that the individuals pay, which is you and I, 60% of that money is pretty much allocated to defense in some sort of way or the veterans, okay? But if we're looking at it from an expense side, right, because it makes up about 60% of, of the revenue, but it only makes up about 25% of their expenses. Because as you'll see in a little bit, we spend much more than we make. One thing that has definitely jumped up in the list is the SBA, the Small Business Administration, uh, $559 billion. For the record, let's go down to 2019. As you can see here, okay, we actually gave the government money, uh, the SBA, right? It was net, negative net cost, which means it was kind of it was revenue, right? Um, so that's a dramatic, dramatic increase. And of course, that comes from all the PPP loans that mostly millionaires and huge businesses actually took and left the small businesses with jack squat chat. Um, that's where that money is. <laughs> Another thing to know, because I've definitely talked about this in another video, I've done this before where I've gone through the government's financials. If I could find that video, I will throw it up here. But basically, in that video, I was talking about the Department of Education and how it was only about 1.5% of the budget um, in a couple of prior years, you know, a couple of years ago. But it was now 3% of the budget, and it's pretty much still in line with that. Um, it did go up by a few billion dollars. But um, I believe that could be to, due to, you know, there was like certain PPE that was bought specifically for the, um, you know, for schools and things like that. So it can have something to do with COVID as well, but it's still not really that well funded. If you want a better education for your kids, you're probably going to have to just pay for private school, right? That's what I intend on doing with my daughter when she goes into school, because as you can see, uh, they don't really care about your education. Those are the main things I wanted to point out. A lot of this is kind of just random stuff. So we have NASA, Department of the Interior, which is just like natural resources. I had to look that up because I was like, the interior? Like interior design? No, nah. it's not that. So anyways, you know, so we have a couple of random things. USPS, which sucks. 
they probably need a little bit more funding because my god i hate usps but at any rate and that's basically it for that right so that ends up being a whopping total of seven trillion dollars seven point four trillion dollars that we have spent the in that fiscal year and just kind of for reference the fiscal year ended in 2020 uh, or september of 2020 so it didn't even go through the whole those last three months of 2020 it wouldn't include the second stimulus this spending is just for the first stimulus package um the cares act okay moving on to the revenue so for revenue as you can see individuals still lead by a crazy amount um of individual uh, of taxes right so us at the individual level even though employers make much more money than us right because if you're a viable business hopefully you're making a profit they pay a very 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 small amount of the taxes as you can see i mean we pay mm, maybe somewhere like six, six or seven times as seven eight nine no, yeah, we pay almost nine times as much taxes as they do, okay? I had to do that math in my head real quick. So individuals actually pay nine times more in taxes than these corporations, even though these corporations are mega millionaires, even billionaires in some situations, right? So if this doesn't show you that you need to have a business, I don't know what will. Corporations pay less taxes because they're smart. Of course, they can hire the right tax people. But I mean, if you do the work yourself, you can definitely find tax loopholes, tax havens, and kind of stuff your money um, in these incentive-based programs. Like I told you guys before, taxes are incentive-based. So if you're doing what the government wants you to do, you will get compensated for it through less taxes, right? So the corporations get that. What I found interesting is that compared to last year, so you see right here, we have 2854, which is $2 trillion, $2.8 trillion dollars. Um, versus three hundred thousand dollars for taxes in twenty twenty, right? But go to twenty nineteen, back when coronavirus was just nothing to anybody, right? It was a mere mention on a Lysol can somewhere. Um, the revenues wasn't that dramatically different. See, we're at twenty nine oh six and three twenty two. Um, so I did the math, and that's basically less than two percent difference, which I find very interesting, right? So what does that tell us about? the taxes and people because if you if you were not if you were living under a rock maybe you didn't hear this but unemployment was absolutely ridiculous last year right um literally like for maybe even two months i think it was about two months straight a million people a week were filing for unemployment okay first time unemployment claims okay that doesn't include people who are already on it that was literally just new claims Every week it was a million. After that, it dropped down and it's been hovering around 700,000 um, ever since, right? So it was going down. It's kind of been fluctuating, but it's been relatively flat. I think I'll pop a chart here if I can find it, right? So unemployment has been dramatic and yet we've only seen a 2% effect on the taxes. So to me, that means that pretty much the people who are losing their jobs are probably below median income, maybe minimum wage earners, people who don't really pay taxes like that anyways, right? Because if you're making minimum wage and you you know, you know couple the standard deduction on there, you probably don't owe any federal taxes. Um, so definitely the people who need the money the most was affected the most, and we didn't even really recognize much of a change. Also, you can see that here in the unemployment taxes line, right? Because unemployment tax collection was 40.7, um, versus last year, which was 39.4. So I'm not really sure, the math isn't mathing to me because we had so much more people on unemployment this year versus last year. So for it to only make like a fraction of a difference as far as the taxes that we've collected is definitely odd. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of that. What do you guys think about that? Drop it in the comments. But at any rate, like I said, we make up the bulk of the income, the taxes that the government receives. After that is a, is corporations and then you know a couple of other miscellaneous items and we're left at three point five trillion dollars. Now of course that's problematic, right? Because what did I just tell you guys? I told you that we spent <laughs> let's go up seventy four twelve, right? Seven trillion, seven point four trillion was spent, three point five trillion was earned. That's absolutely a bad day, right? Um you can't really, as an individual, you wouldn't be able to make it that far if you're spending literally more than double uh, of what you earn. It it wouldn't really make a lot of sense. It wouldn't really work out for too long, okay? But for whatever reason, governments can do this and it's like totally fine.
And just so you have a kind of a reference, last year the net um like the net cost was one point four trillion, right? Uh versus this year the net cost is three point eight. So we've almost tripled the deficit. Um and mind you, that doesn't even capture that other stimulus check. And I have reason to believe that we'll have some more type of stimulus coming down the pipeline. I don't know what it will look like. I don't think it'll be right now or anytime soon because you know how they like to drag things out. Um, but I can definitely see more stimulus talks coming up in down in the future. But yeah, so that's interesting. Okay, let's go to the balance sheet. Okay, so now we have the balance sheet and... Uh, it's important to go to this because you can also kind of see where money is moving through. Uh, if you're like a real investor and you're looking for the viability of a company and you want to see their performance, you would definitely be looking at their income statement and their balance sheet, maybe before buying a stock. These days, everything is pretty much speculative, so no one knows what this is, how to get to it, no one even cares. But, you know, this is kind of like what you would do. And I'm going to have a video coming out where I'm going to kind of walk through one company in particular and kind of show you what I would be looking for if I was like a true investor, right? So make sure you're subscribed for that. But anyways, so let's look at their assets. So as you can see, the majority of the asset is just cash, cash and other monetary assets, blah, 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 blah. This is not really, really not that important. The point is we have $5.9 trillion in assets. How many liabilities do we have? We have 32.7 trillion dollars in liabilities so not only are we insolvent we're insolvent af right i mean the government could literally sell everything they own five times and still not have enough money to cover the liabilities so that's kind of nuts okay it's it's actually really nuts and i also want to look at the u.s debt clock just to kind of show you guys what it is per citizen right so this is the national debt I think this is only including, um, yeah, marketable and non-marketable security. So it, it's different than the 32 for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is kind of like a running total um, as of right now. And, I've, and of course, like I said, their fiscal year ended in 2020 or uh, September of 2020. Um, so the number's not exactly the same, but you can get an idea. The debt per citizen is $85,000. When I started my YouTube channel, this number was in the 60s. I believe it was like $60,000, maybe $62,000, something like that, okay? So all the expense, all of the things that we have spent during COVID and just like 2020 fiscal year in general has added $20,000 per person, not per taxpayer, per citizen, per your baby, okay? $20,000 on their head immediately, boom, in one year. So going back to this, as you can see, the bulk of the liabilities is the federal debt and interest payable. That's all the... Um, um, you know, your treasury bills, your T-bills, your, bills, your bonds, whatever, all the debt that America gets into, this is where it sits on the balance sheet, okay? And that's $21 trillion, so a gross majority of the debt is just from the government borrowing money. And why do they have to borrow money? Because we're running deficits, right? So it, money does is created out of thin air for them, right? However, they still have to borrow it into existence. So we had $3.5 trillion of revenue and we had about $7.4 trillion of expenses. So that difference has to come up from the American people. They're going to go out there and issue all this debt. You and I will buy the bonds or maybe China will buy the bonds because China is the, the biggest purchaser of our bonds at this point. Um, so they're the ones kind of enabling us, right? What happens if they stop doing that? What happens if we, start, we stop loaning money to the government, right? Because honestly... I wouldn't want to, like, I know that no matter what, we'll get our money back because they could just print it and inflate our money, like I've explained in previous videos. Um, but if this was a regular person, no, I'm not going to loan you any money. You don't even make enough money to cover your day-to-day -day expenses. So why would I even loan you all this extra money so you can further get yourself into debt? Right? It doesn't make any sense on an individual level. But for the government, it's okay. For whatever reason, it's I. <laughs> but this number right here is why we have to keep interest rates suppressed. 21 trillion dollars can you imagine the interest on this okay and i think they were if i go like deeper down i don't want to get too deep this is like a 265 page document but when you do go deeper down in the document they kind of show you what the average interest rate is that they're paying and if that goes up it will be 
very 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 catastrophic and while i'm here let's go back to the u.s debt clock just so i can kind of show you again like i said it's eighty five thousand dollars per citizen two hundred and twenty four dollars per tax or two hundred twenty four thousand excuse me dollars per taxpayer our gdp uh, our debt to gdp is 129 dollars, which means for every one dollar of growth it takes a dollar and twenty nine cents to actually produce that, or for every hundred dollars of growth, it takes one hundred and twenty nine dollars to get that growth. So it's just kind of it's odd. It's odd how we can and people will still have the arrogance to call America the greatest country, say we're so well ran, and I'm not gonna argue with that. I think the military definitely has something to do with that, right? Um, because. If not by number, numerically it doesn't make sense, but baby, bring the military out, all of a sudden it's going to make a lot of sense, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, we're not going to, a lot of people are not going to really argue against that. Um, but who's going to pay that? Does that even matter? I think I'm actually going to have a video coming out talking about why these numbers don't even matter. If you're interested, let me know. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for this video. <laughs> if you like this video, then please be sure to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you have anything else going on, you know what to do. Oh, I'm getting a phone call, but <laughs> go ahead and watch my other videos. And until next time, keep your money up.